So let's just get straight into it. Now food, first point I have is calculate maintenance calories. Now for those who are unaware, essentially, you need to be in a calorie surplus to gain weight. What do I mean by calorie surplus? You need to be a certain amount of calories over your maintenance. Your maintenance calories is essentially, essentially the, food, the amount of calories that you need to stay the same weight. So you'll eat a certain amount of food in a day, and if you hit your maintenance calories, then you'll sort of stay the same weight. Of course, you can't directly hit your maintenance calories. You'd have to be very, very specific, but you get the idea. So the way to calculate your maintenance calories is through a, a website. I believe it's called calculator.net. You essentially just put in your age, height, weight. It will calculate your maintenance calories. And, you know, you set your sort of goal to how much weight gain. So if you want like half a pound a week or a full pound a week, you sort of set that and it will tell you your what the calorie surplus you need now typically you're going to want a sort of 400 plus calorie surplus like 400 million i just sort of minimum sorry i just sort of go with the basis i think my maintenance is around 2400 2500 and i always just try to aim for 3000 calories i know there's going to be some people that disagree or what have you but i think that's just a nice you know benchmark to hit to ensure that i'm getting the right amount of calories so step one calculate your maintenance cal calories see where your starting point is and then we go from there so number two is to track your calories there are several different apps you can use for this i personally use an app called chronometer now you'll hear a lot of people talking about my fitness pal the thing is i tried my fitness pal and the only reason i didn't want to like use it is because it seemed a lot of the features were like locked behind a paywall and one of the main features a barcode scanner you'd also have to get the premium thing for i don't know if it's still like that right now that's just what it was like when i was trying it last year so um you know try my fitness pal if you want to do that or i personally use an app called chronometer i'll put the name of it in the description or something i'll put it on screen and i just enjoy using that one in particular because i think it does most of what my fitness pal does but i can just scan barcodes easier it's just more convenient than having to search in everything the only thing that i imagine will be a problem is that my fitness pal will probably because it's more established it'll have like a wider library of foods and uh, for example it's not uncommon for me to be on chronometer and i'll scan a particular food and it just doesn't have it in so i have to like input it myself which is not that big a deal but i'm not sure what it's like in different countries i'd imagine my fitness pal is more accessible for different countries other than the uk i can't tell you in terms of the us or europe or anywhere else because i'm i just don't know but i would assume that my fitness pal would be better for the us because it would probably have a wider library of foods or you know other countries as well but just give it a try. Find a um, calorie tracker that works for you. Now, I've also put in brackets, but don't become obsessed. This is, I think, an issue that everyone has to take very seriously. Personally, I'm not that obsessed over calories, although I track everything I eat and I put the calories in. I'm like, you know, there's times when I know that I can't track my calories and my calories and tracking is never going to be 100% correct. I can't like you know calculate the composition of fats to protein in a like a slab of meat right i can you know estimate it by looking at the back but the backs again just uh the back of the packaging is just an estimation as well so i can never be 100 percent accurate so i don't think there's much point in worrying too much about it it's also a case that i think there's going to be obviously certain days where I just can't track calories. If I like go out for a meal with family or I'm on holiday, for example, in a hotel, I can't ask the staff to like, excuse me, can you get me a weighing scale so I can see how many, if I, this fit my macros, guys? No, right? All I do on those days is just like track my like one thing as like a rough estimate, 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 um, so I don't lose my streak on the app. But I think if you're in those situations, just ensure it's not like a consistent thing. So like if you're going out now and again to eat, then of course, then that's fine. You're not going to see like massive losses. Um, but let's say you're like on holiday in a hotel. There's no way to like properly track your calories. I'd say if there's a gym in the hotel, definitely use that. And just make sure your 
eating enough to where you think that you've reached your goals, right? Or just eat slightly more than you usually do. Because if you've been tracking for a while, it's sort of easily, you're more inclined to know what you need to eat more of rather than what you just like stick to eating, if that makes sense. <laughs> that was so poorly explained. But just once you've been tracking for a while, you'll be able to figure out, okay, I'm sorry, probably not reach enough calories, so I need something more, something else to eat. So tracking calories, I think is very good. I was not seeing any major gains until I, so I started going to the gym in February of 2023. And it was only of like August, 2023 that I started tracking. And that's when I saw like considerable progress. Cause I was sort of, I was eating slightly more than what I normally eat or what I normally used to eat back in like, you know, 2023, 2022, when I was a bit, you know, skinnier. But the issue was, is that I had no clue that I was sort of only getting slightly over maintenance. And it's just what I thought was like a lot. I was only reaching about, you know, 2,400 calories, which is like, you know, even slightly below my maintenance on most days. So I definitely recommend tracking because it allows you to be more accurate and ensure that you're going to make progress. But make sure you don't become totally obsessed with numbers and like stay up thinking about how many calories you're having. If that if that affects you and you're just becoming too neurotic about it, then don't bother tracking. Just, you know, stick to the consistency of the gym and just have a good relationship with food. Because I think so many guys just get so obsessed over the like what they're putting in their bodies that it just takes sort of the enjoyment out of it, takes the fun out of it, and then they just end up quitting. So make sure you know your limits and keep it fun. Uh, step three in terms of what foods to eat, I think ultimately the healthiest option to have is single ingredients foods because this is going to go on to a later point talking about lean bulking and dirty bulking but what a lot of guys think they should do is just like eat whatever they want they will they will start eating like loads of burgers and stuff because it's loads of calories or just have mcdonald's every day or burger king or what have you which on paper sounds like a good idea and of course you're going to gain a lot of weight from that get a lot of calories build some muscle but you're also gonna build a lot of fat. So you're just gonna have this weird composition of physique where it's like, you've, sure, you've built the muscle, but it's been covered by how much fat you've gained. Another thing is what a lot of people don't talk about is sort of the mental effect that food has. Because if you're eating like really processed foods like burgers or ice cream, it's just gonna give you like brain fog. It's gonna increase the ins insulin in your bloodstream. I'm not well versed in the whole biology of it, but I know little bits. Essentially, oh, I need just cracked a flipping wood panel in <laughs> the living room. Um, essentially, your insulin's gonna increase. You're gonna, you know, feel more tired. You're gonna feel more lethargic. You're not gonna want to, you know, actually progress in the gym as much, not have as much energy. And, you know, what a lot of people also don't talk about is how processed foods, they don't have any vitamin content, right? McDonald's doesn't ensure that a burger has all your, you know, all the iron that it needs or all the calcium or what have you. They don't care about that too much because it doesn't necessarily add that much to the taste. They just care about maximizing the taste so that you'll buy more of it. So the best solution for this is single ingredient foods because single ingredient foods, what I mean by that is that you look on the back of the packaging and it just has, it doesn't have an ingredient list because it's just oranges or it's just chicken. You know, you'll see like long lists, right? If you've ever looked on the back of a monster energy can, oh my God, they've got like flipping shit that they're putting rockets in that the list is that long. But make sure you're looking at the back, seeing, okay, the less ingredients it has, ultimately, I think the healthier it's going to be for you because it's not got like processed oils and things and what have you. So the single ingredient foods, not only will this just be better for your body as well, it'll be better for your mind. You're going to have less brain fog. You're going to be sort of feel better about yourself because you're getting the vitamins and minerals that you can get. You can also track those on the chronometer app with the vitamin, vitamins and minerals that you need for each day. And I assume that that's the same for my fitness pal. I don't know for certain. So single ingredient foods are definitely the way to go. It's also, if you're wanting to like not gain too much weight, it's also very good because um, vegetables, 
and fruits are essentially nothing but carbs, right? There's, you know, not too much protein in it. Obviously, it depends on which vegetable and which fruit you're talking about. But for the most part, they're just entirely carbs. So you, if you're not wanting to gain too much weight, then eating so, like, a vast amount of fruit and vegetables is just going to fill you up anyway because carbs fill you up. They're the kind of carbs that just, like, stop your hunger because it tells your body that you're full. The kind of carbs that you get from processed food and fast foods that's different because it's going to sort of make you feel more hungry and therefore you're going to eat more of it so single ingredient foods that's tip number three stick to single ingredient foods or keep the processed foods to a minimum minimum because i know how difficult it is nowadays to like only eat single ingredient foods especially when you've got parents who do the shopping or whatever just take some initiative have a conversation with them tell them i want to start eating more healthy and I'm sure most parents wouldn't say no to their kids eating more healthy. So definitely have that communication with them. Uh, think about the mental effect. I guess I've already d discussed that. It's just sort of the mental effects because you wouldn't put the incorrect amount of fuel into a car. I've heard a guy say this. I can't remember his name. I'll leave a link in the description for the a great bulking video that I'm sure is much shorter than this. And um you know, it's sort of more concise. I'm just trying to go through everything I can think of. But this particular guy that I watched, he said something like, um, you won't put the incorrect fuel for a car. So why put the incorrect fuel for your own body? And I think that's just spot on. Like, why would you put a bunch of sugary, processed, high fat crap in your body when that's not what your body needs to run? You won't put diesel into a petrol car. You won't put petrol into a diesel car. Looks like they're needing to get some petrol. <laughs> they're pretty angry right now. <laughs> Bloody honking the horns and ruining my video. Um, so yeah, the mental effect is... I can't emphasise it enough. Pe people need to know how much like, of a mental effect food can have. But also, stay hydrated. <sighs> Bloody hell. It's a hot one today, boys. A hot one today. And another point I have underneath that is think about acne and body fat. So there's obviously certain foods that are more prone to giving you acne. And this is definitely the processed foods. Something that I noticed when I started bulking and eating more, because in the early days, I was just sort of like eating what was ever in the fridge. I was kind of dirty bulking, kind of not. Um, I was just eating more stuff. And that's when I started getting like major acne. I've always cleansed my face from when I started getting acne, like age 13. And I've never had a major problem with it. But since I've started bulking, it's definitely appeared more on my face. It's not as bad as it used to be where I was getting loads of spots on my forehead. And it was just like, you know, I didn't care about it that much because I knew I could get rid of it. But it was just kind of really annoying. Um, so that's that. And then obviously the body fat, if you're eating too many things, you're sure going to build enough muscle. But if you're eating too many things that have too high a fat content, it's just going to be covered up. So you're going to have to just... You're gonna bulk up, then you're gonna to have to go on a cut, which is a lot, what a lot of guys do, but I'd rather spend more time building the muscle and keep a lean physique rather than having to, you know, gain loads of weight really quickly because of dirty bulking and then having to go on a cut because I've had too much body fat. And then the next point is just a good benchmark for how much protein you need. So of course, protein is an essential thing uh, for building muscle. And I'd say a good benchmark to have is every day, one kilogram of protein per pound of body weight. Now, there's people that agree with this, people that disagree with this. There's a whole bunch of stuff online. I think that this is just, you know, I think I'm around 140 pounds as of current, 139 at least, I'm not sure. But one kilogram of protein per pound of body weight that's just a benchmark that i try to hit every day i try to get at least a bit over that or at least close to that number because it's you know like i said you can't be 100 percent accurate 100 percent of the time so if you're reaching so if you have like a target and you're reaching slightly above that target then that's definitely progress is going to be made there i just ensure i get over it so i can guarantee that i'm going to build muscle um so I should probably go into a full explanation of what lean bulking versus dirty bulking is. So lean bulking is where you're eating those single ingredient foods. You're eating sort of healthier stuff, um, you know, meats, not processed kinds, just like, you know, beef, chicken, pork, whatever. 
and then you're getting all your vegetables in you know just not processed stuff right that's how you're going to build muscle whereas with dirty bulking that's when you're eating the high calorie processed stuff like ice cream fast foods cakes pastries you what have you and my opinion obviously dirty bulking is much faster than lean bulking that's why a lot of people do it because people are like oh you can eat whatever you want and then you know you can eat fix your micros so that's okay like, like i said the problem is is that it has sh such an adverse mental effect on you and also a physical effect because you're probably gonna if you're like a teenager like me you're probably going to get more acne you're probably going to feel shit about yourself you're probably going to get more body fat than you need and of course lean bulking takes more time but the time's going to pass by anyway like if you have two guys who are going to the gym for the exact same amount of time the lean bulking guy is probably going to look better at the end of the year than the dirty, dirty bulking that dirty bulking guy if i can speak english because he's not got as much body fat whereas the dirty bulking guy has just got way too much body fat fat and he's gonna have to go on that bulk i swear i do speak english guys i just i need to slow it down a bit Whew. right we're back on track <laughs> so yeah what i like to say is use the 80 20 rule so lean bulk sort of 80 percent of the time have the majority of the time be that you're eating healthy eating single ingredient foods you're sticking on track and not eating too many processed foods and then i'd say 20 percent of the time dirty bulk you know now and again go to a fast food place and then maybe you know after you've eaten your meals you can have certain other processed stuff like cheese cheese isn't that bad to be honest it's just you know doesn't have too many ingredients so it's like okay for bulking as well because what i think people do is that they have they go to extremes too much either people only lean bulk and then they realize how difficult it is to do because you have to be really restrictive with your food and then just quit entirely or they'll just do a dirty bulk which you know they'll think is great initially it's really fast but then it's going to have an adverse mental effect and you're going to look shit and feel like shit <laughs> so I definitely have the majority of the time lean bulk, but don't be too restrictive and allow some area for dirty bulk. That's why I say 80% of the time lean bulk, 20% of the time dirty bulk. Just don't be too restrictive, but don't just eat crap is what I've written here. Um, another essential thing, as you just saw previously, was drinking water. Because not only is hydration just vital for well-being, I think... To be honest, I don't mean to sound like just a typical guy, like, drink more water, but I think most of people's problems when they get, like, serious headaches or they just have no energy would be solved if they just hydrate themselves more. So at least two litres of water a day. I've got, like, a full litre bottle, so I just fill that up, obviously, twice a day. I probably get more than that because I drink a lot of water. So, therefore, the only problem that you have with drinking more water is that you need to piss more. So it's, like, kind of an inconvenience when you're, like, out with people and just, like, oh, do you mind, guys? We're going to have a quick waz because I drank too much water today. But there's no such thing as like too more, much water. Well, there is. You could like have too many gallons, but you're probably not going to do that because no one would drink that much water. Now, another good thing about water is that for skinny guys like myself with a fast metabolism, sometimes you could eat a load of food and, you know, you've just not quite reached your calories and it's just let's say you've got like a plate full of rice and salmon right that's hard to get down rice in particular is really difficult to get down now the thing with a drink obviously it makes it easier for it to get down your throat but liquids expand your stomach so there's literally more room in your stomach to fit more food so definitely having a drink with you each meal will be essential because you know hydration is um, important it stops things getting stuck in your throat and it expands your stomach so you're gonna eat more food in the long run so that's definitely a big plus i don't mean in the long run as in like it permanently expands your stomach i'm just saying you've got liquid in your stomach so like a balloon it's gonna expand for the time being uh, another thing obviously like i mentioned it's easier to get things down with liquids so blending your food is an option that is like a an extreme where you just like blend all your food and drink it that's what a lot of bodybuilders do um i do think that a good thing you can try is protein shakes they are a bit of a hassle to make because of how many like ingredients they have. There's lots of YouTubers out there who have got the 
a particular recipe for a shake and there's tons of YouTube videos showing you how to make these shakes. So if that's what you want to do, I don't have like shakes where it's like loads of ingredients like olive oil and, you know, bananas and protein powder and milk and what have you. I don't have them very often just because it's just, it's just kind of a hassle to make them and prepare them. I would like to, but you know, there's times when you like parents are in the kitchen and preparing stuff and you just don't want to get out of the way. And then, you know, they'll complain that you've like left all the washing up. So you've got to do that. There's just, for me, there's too many steps. And I feel like I just don't, you know, I'm able to reach my calorie goals without having a shake, which they can be really beneficial. Don't get me wrong. Cause that, a particular shake that I was making from a certain YouTuber, something, his name was like Beckles or something. I'll leave a link in the description for him as well, if I can find him. But um, this particular shake, it like, it said that it was a thousand calorie shake, but when I made it, it was only like 735 calories, which I think, I don't know. It must be that I wasn't using the exact same products as he was. So that's why I didn't get as many calories in, but that's, you know, an extra 735 calories that's easy to get down because it's a liquid. That's a result. I'm not going to complain about that, but you just, you know, if you want to keep doing that, or you want to start doing that then i do recommend it i just personally don't do it for time consumption reasons um, another thing to consider of course as i've just mentioned is protein powder protein powder is you know just a god like if you need to just spat everywhere <laughs> if you need like an extra boost of protein then having that protein powder is just a godsend now of course it is a process kind of thing there are a lot of ingredients in protein powder and protein powder can lead to an increase in acne so i don't have it every single day it's just that if i need that quick boost of protein if i'm like you know if i've not like reached my protein goals for the day then i'll have one but the problem was is that i was having every i think every i was having a protein shake which was just literally just the protein powder and some milk every single day i think both of those things both milk and protein powder can lead to an increase in acne so I was having that like every single day and that's when my face just started breaking out. So I decided to have it within moderation. Again, this might not even affect you. There's some people out there who could like drink loads of protein things and then just not have it show on their face. Every person's different. Just, you know, adjust accordingly based on how your body reacts to it. Always listen to your body. That's the main thing. Don't overwork it. Always listen to the signals. If you're starting to get in breakouts and stuff, then that's obviously your body telling you that you need to change something up. And then another tip I have, this is the final tip for the whole food things. Like I said, there's not any major structure to this. This is just me giving some advice to you guys who want us to start bulking. So tip number 11, don't have breakfast immediately in the morning. Now, the thing is when I wake up in the morning, I'm not really that hungry, hungry, hungry. That's why those English lessons I need to start taking. I'm not that hungry in the morning because I don't know, it's just, I'll get up, I'll like do my morning routine, I'll get washed, get changed, and I'm downstairs, and I'm wanting to have like a thousand calories for a breakfast. So I'll make all the stuff, but it's like just a hassle to get down. Like I finished the food, but it's just, I'm like sat there for like half an hour eating, and it's just really sluggish, and I'm drinking loads of water trying to get it down, and it's just really, really hard. So what I like to do is sort of get up in the morning, but then leave like a one or two hour window before I eat. So let's say I like get up at 7 a.m., and you know i do my morning routine i won't go downstairs straight away to eat my food i'll like wait until like let's say i don't know 9 a.m or 10 a.m because that's when i my stomach starts actually rumbling that's like a good indication that you need to get some food down here obviously and so i won't eat until my stomach starts properly rumbling and in that window of course in the morning you can also get some like work done because it's your mind is sort of sharper when you don't eat food because you'll probably get that feeling where you like eat loads of food and you just feel like you just want to rest because your body's digesting. It's losing a lot of uh, energy in your body. So you've not got enough energy to contribute to brain power to have it a hundred percent efficiency. So it's definitely better in the morning to be that little bit hungrier. And also you get the benefit of doing, you know, let's say you need to write some scripts or write some documents or do some homework. If you do it in the morning, you're sharper because you're not, your body is not using that energy to digest food. So you can focus it all on doing the work. And this is sort of called, this sort of links to intermittent fasting, which is where you have like a window in a day to eat food, where it's like you only eat food between the hours of 
I don't know, 12 p.m. and 6 p.m., for example. I don't know if that's correct, because I always get confused between a.m. noon or p.m. noon. But anyway, <laughs> I think p.m. is noon. I don't know. Anyway, it's similar to intermittent fasting in that, in that you sort of have a window to eat, but I just see it as I'm not eating immediately in the morning so I can be hungry. Because intermittent fasting, I think... The problem with it is that when you're trying to bulk and build muscle and that's what your goal is, then it can be like really, really hard because you've only got like a certain amount of hours to eat food in a day and it's like not the longest window. So I just don't have breakfast immediately in the morning for the reason of it's going to be easier to eat my breakfast because I'm now like more hungry because I haven't eaten since like last night. And also it just allows me to get stuff in, done in the morning and be more productive. So that's the final tip for the food, don't have breakfast immediately in the morning. Right, now we're moving on to the gym stuff. <laughs> right, so I've got about 10 points here, so let's just get through them. Uh, number one, track using the Strong app. Again, this is linking to, this is linking to um, me tracking my lifts because I was originally, because I don't like using my phone in the gym, I don't listen to music in the gym either, I just listen to whatever radio crap they have, because so, honestly, there's just white noise going in my mind, so I just, I just, you know, in between sets, instead of listening to music, I'm just there like, anyway, <laughs> so I was originally about like six months ago, I was originally using a book to uh, track my lifts, which was, you know, it was okay, but in like my college gym, I became like a bit of a meme uh, because people at thought, first one guy asked me, he's like, why do you have your passport out in the gym? Because it was like a little book about that big. I'm just there with like a pencil writing in it, all my lists and stuff. Um, but track any way you can, to be honest. Obviously the most convenient way is to track it on phone. But if you feel like you're gonna be distracted by that, um, then use a book or you just write it down anyway. I personally use my phone now because I've got to the point where I just, you know, I won't scroll through it or start scrolling in between sets. I just sort of like, you know, I'll have it on, turn the screen off, and then in between sets, I'm just sort of sat there waiting for my rest period to be over, and I'll get back into it. But I personally use an app called Strong to track all my lifts to ensure that each week I'm going to, you know, do more, known as progressive overload. We'll get into that. And what's good about the Strong app is that it's, you know, it's for free. And the free version allows you to um, have three presets, which I guess is a bit, like, limited. But um, there are some, like, example presets that you can, like, use that you don't have to save that's just built into the app. And I'm on a push-pull leg split. So, so that means on one day I'm doing things where I have to push the weight. On another day I'm doing things where I have to pull the weight towards me. And then another day I'm doing leg day, which is my favorite day. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's plenty of other apps available. Just download certain apps where you can track your weight and track your um, gym progress and see what works for you. I just personally use the app Strong. It's just very convenient, very, you know, nice ecosystem. And I can just, I, I personally use the leg preset on the app and then I have my own push-pull and then upper presets, because I also do a upper day as well. All saved there. And what's good about it is that even if you don't have a preset saved with like a particular exercise, it will still like, let's say you add the exercise into the preset and like you do a certain thing and then you remove it, it will still save all your progress that you inputted for that particular exercise, which is very convenient. So that's why I like using it. Uh, the second thing, early on in the gym, let's say you're just literally starting out in the gym you haven't even signed up yet my advice to you is focus on consistency and attending the gym rather than worrying about you know how much weight i can do and tracking things because what a lot of the issue is is that i didn't initially start tracking all my stuff i didn't initially start you know focusing on how much weight i need this week or like having a program i I was written a program because I actually started in my college gym. And what's good about my college gym is that there's like staff there who can like write you a fitness program and things uh, based on like if you want to lose weight or build muscle, which was very convenient. Um, if you attend a college or a school, I'm sure there'll be people there that can help you out and give you advice, even if it's just simply spotting you. You know, I'm not sure if every place um, has people who write a fitness program for you for free as well, because my gym was only like 
10 pounds for the entire year which was crazy um so i'm just very grateful that the staff helped me with everything because i would have been completely lost but of course there's also youtube videos there's plenty of great advice on you know youtube and the internet where you can just see if you're doing the correct things just make sure that you don't you get the exercise correct before you start adding weight because you don't want to injure yourself you don't want to be like doing loads of weight but you're doing the exercise incorrect so at the point that you're just gonna tear a muscle and then be out of the gym because then you'll just lose a lot of progress so i went on a complete tangent there <laughs> consistency is key in the beginning like even if you're just attending the gym every single day to just use the treadmill that's still progress. You're still doing better than the guy that's been thinking about going to the gym, but he can't be asked. So he's just going to stay at home and do it tomorrow. You're still doing better than that guy. I always like to imagine that there's a guy that I'm in direct competition with. And when I'm, for example, recording YouTube videos or going to the gym, I like to think that he's not doing those, th those things. So I'm one step ahead of him. I'm already making more progress than he is. And that just sort of motivates me more to have this sort of invisible person on the other side of the world who isn't making as much progress as me it just gives me that motivation so yeah just in the beginning just make sure even if you're not even exercising the act of like going to the gym and just like having a look around and you know it not even doing a workout is still progress because you're becoming more familiar in the environment you might even have just a day where you go into the gym and you're just like talking with people, asking like, oh, what their splits are, or what, what they're working with, um, what they're doing today. Because that allows you to become more adapted to the environment, becomes a more friendly environment. You don't feel as alone. And this links on to my third point, which is um, get gym bros, because social experience, I honestly, like, I'm tied between in the gym the main aspects of my gym experience it's tied between muscle building and also the social experience because like i'm a person who's focused on self-improvement right and one of the most fantastic things that i can self-improve is not only my physique but also my social skills in the gym because there's people in there you know all similar to me all starting off at different points and we can sort of find similarities and um you know share experiences obviously if you have friends that are also thinking about going to the gym you know go with them just make sure that they like lock in because i know what happens a lot of the time is that you'll have you'll see like like three guys around the bench and like you know one's like wanting a spot and he's struggling and the two are like on the phone like this and then they suddenly realize and they like help the guy out so just having gym bros keeps you motivated and disciplined and it's also something that you can like wake up for it's like let's say you organize with the guys to um go to the gym at let's say 1 p.m then that means you like have to get up at a certain time because otherwise you're going to be seen as unreliable and they're just going to stop inviting you to the gym and you're going to feel left out and then you're probably just going to quit the gym anyway because now you're not motivated by your gym bros so that's all I can really say about that. Just the social experience of the gym is just so enriching. I, like I said, it's tied between my favorite aspects of muscle building. That, yeah, tied with muscle building <laughs> because it's just such a great thing. And I feel like my social skills have improved so much. And it's not like you have to make, be like best friends with people in the gym. It's just that you have to, you know, introduce yourself, put yourself out there, put yourself in an uncomfortable situation, right? Just become the guy that like interacts with people in the gym and ask them how's the workout going and ask them how the day's gone and what they're doing at the weekend you just feel better about yourself and you make other people feel better because you're interested in what they're doing um and then step four is sort of once consistent when you've once you've built that consistency in the gym where it's like you don't even negotiate with yourself to go into the gym even when you don't feel like it that's what discipline is you're going to the gym even if you've had a bit of a crap day or you've got no energy just make sure that you attend the gym when you say you will. And the sort of thing that people do. There's people talking outside. <laughs> uh, aim for 12 reps. So like one, let's say I'm doing a chest press. That counts as one rep. I'm actually explaining this to like the bare bones. So people make sure I know what I'm talking about. One rep is like one. Hang on. I had like a weight here. It's 2.5. 2.5 pounds so this right here that counts as one repetition 
two repetitions, three repetitions. Aim for 10 to 12 of those, because people say that's the range. Of course, you can build muscle at any rep range, but just aim for that range minimum. Um, I know there'll be people out there saying like, oh, bro, make sure you make sure you do it to failure, which is where you like physically can't push the weight anymore. And I think the problem is this with this is that that's like for inexperienced people going to the gym, that's like sort of bad advice because they just you're not going to make a lot of progress if you're just starting out in the gym and you're just trying to get your like you know trying to bench the barbell and trying to get the the form correct it's going to be like really really hard on your muscles that are not used to you know doing this physical exercise and you're just going to be so much pain and you're just going to be exhausted if you're working to failure and i have to say folks even though i wasn't working to failure initially <laughs> when i started i was doing like the 10 to 12 work reps things right the my first day in the gym the day after oh oh my god the soreness was unreal my whole body was like so stiff and i was like ah oh. so that's something that you've got to look forward to but that does you know go away after a while as your body becomes more accustomed to it but i think that's where a lot of people will quit it's where you're like have your first day in the gym you have a really good workout and then the next day your muscles are just going to be completely destroyed because it's like whoa what the hell what are you doing man um so just make sure you push through that like the soreness is going to become less and less your body's going to become more accustomed to it because that's what happens your muscles just going to build that stronger so the soreness is not going to be extreme all right so this is, I guess I should also explain what progressive overload is, what I mentioned previously. Essentially, progressive overload is like, let's say you're, I'll use this example of this dumbbell, if you could even call it that. <laughs> um, let's say I'm using 2.5 pounds, right? And I do it for about, you know, 10 repetitions. And then the next set, I do it for 12 repetitions. And then the set after that, I do it for 15 repetitions. For me, if I find like 15 reps, like really easy, then that's like an indication that I need to up the weight. And that's what progressive overload is. It's where you're sort of either upping the weight so you can reach the same amount of reps as you did on a previous weight, or you're upping the amount of reps on the same weight. So that's when like people who are more advanced at the gym start going to failure where they'll use lighter weight and make sure you do that because i'll i see guys who are like you know trying to go to failure on like weight that's like way too heavy and it like destroys their form and they're just not getting the benefit of the exercise so make sure if you are going to go to failure after you've been to the gym for a while make sure you lower the weight and just make sure it's safe because at the end of the day you're only human you're not superhuman so you're not going to you're not going to be indestructible just remember that so yeah progressive overload you're up in the way each week so every time you have a session try to do a bit more than what you did last time don't like start adding flipping i don't know 15 kgs on from last week because it's just much more safer and i guess more you sort of want it more if you increase the weight in slow increments because if i was to like you know just add the weight on quickly and then not be able to do it i'll just be demotivated and then i'll just feel like I, i'm making no progress and back to square one but if i'm like doing the weight bit by bit each week i probably could do more and that's what's going to get me back in the gym it's the idea that i can do more that's going to be keep me going at the gym and then before i know it, i'm like benching crazy amounts of weight that i never thought i could do only because I was patient and doing the increase in the weight gradually and gradually because that just makes you more hungry to add more weight on because ultimately realistically your body you know although it has its limits you know let's say I'm adding 1.25 kg I could probably add on 2.5 but it's the fact that I've only added 1.25 kg that after I've done with my gym session I'm like I could probably do more and that's what's going to keep me motivated to going back and keep me wanting to increase the weight if you catch my drift so progressive overload something also that's not necessarily a gym tip it's just sort of like a hygiene tip is that after you've like sweated a lot during an exercise make sure you wash your, your face because i mean this is just particularly for people who suffer about acne but something that i found is that sweating can definitely reduce acne and prevent acne because you're getting all the toxins and what have you from your face there 
coming out with sweat but if you don't wash your face like i don't know in between your workout or at the end of your workout then all that's just going to get reabsorbed into your face like you're going to have toxins that have come out of your face going back in because you've not wiped it so make sure you know if you're like sweating a lot mid-workout who the hell's shouting <laughs> make sure if you're sweating a lot mid-workout you wash your face because that's gonna you know reduce the amount of acne that you're gonna get and obviously at the end of the workout so yeah that's just a quick hygiene tip for you um i've explained this already advanced level is doing sets to failure but don't let the ego get in the way lower the weight if necessary um another step is just don't skip leg day i know leg day can be a pain i like to think that if you don't dislike leg day then you're doing it wrong <laughs> Daniel said it was cold. This is the problem with li living next to like a flipping like alleyway is that you just have random people walking past and ruining the corner, but that doesn't matter. So yeah, uh, don't skip leg day because you're just gonna look very disproportionate if you have like a really good upper body and you've just got like really stick legs. Like people are gonna look at you and think, bro, skip leg day. And you don't want a lot. If you're wanting to build like a very nice physique, you wanna have both the upper strength and the lower strength and with leg day uh leg day is definitely the time when you need gym bros because there's some times where you're like doing certain exercises and you know you could do more but you just can't be asked like you just cannot be bothered to continue and when i'm with some bros at the gym they like don't let me get up until i've like done the maximum that i can do which is like you know although at the time i don't appreciate i really appreciate afterwards because I want them big legs. Another tip that I shall give people, which is, you know, you'll hear a lot of major YouTubers talk about it, but make sure you train neck, right? You can look online for like neck exercises. The main one I do is where I put the plate in the middle of my head and I start doing this. Now, the problem with these exercises is that look really goofy. <laughs> like you'll be, so <laughs> imagine you're just like walking into the gym and you see a guy lying on the bench, just going like this, like doing curls like that. That's why people don't train neck because it's just a sort of goofy exercise to do. And a lot of people probably don't know like exercises to do for training neck. Now, the problem that I have is that sure you could build like a lot of muscle, but if you have like a really skinny neck, then you know the neck muscles are like always visible no matter what clothing you wear apart from tail necks um, but you know it's it's a muscle that's going to be most of the time you know majority of the time on display so if you're like really really muscular and you've just got this really like boyish skinny neck then it's going to be just like the same as having really skinny legs it's just going to look a bit off so make sure you train neck safely don't overexert it because something that happened to me is that i was over exercising my neck a bit and i just started getting like random muscle spasms in my in my left side so that's when i knew that i needed to reduce the reps and maybe reduce the weight as well but yeah that's the only issue that you have with training neck is that it's it's beneficial and you know it's just it's a tedious exercise that's not as fun to do as like bicep curls or lat pull downs it looks goofy so you're gonna have the issue of like people judging you but at the end of the day man no one cares everyone's focusing on their own shit if there is a dickhead in there who's like making funny people with training neck just have a look at his neck right and see if you could like literally snap it in half so there you go um next tip of course is essential get enough sleep seven to eight hours or just what's good for you because i personally think i don't need eight hours of sleep i like i feel much more refreshed when i get like six and a half to seven hours but you definitely especially after a time at the gym a workout session you definitely need that time for your muscles to recover because you physically torn them you need that time to recover also it gives you time gives the water time to work its magic in your body so yeah sleep is just vital so if you have an absolutely diabolical sleep schedule where you're staying up to like 1 2 3 a.m and i'm waking up at flipping i don't know like noon a you're just not gonna have enough time in the day to go for a gym you're not gonna have enough energy 
and you're just not going to make as good gains. So we want to maximize that, brothers. You know, you understand. Right, and then the final tip. Tip number 10, comparison is the thief of joy, right? Yes, of course, get gym bros. Yes, of course, discuss things with people in the gym. But ultimately, you are an individual. Your genetics are not the same to your friend down the road or your that guy that's been going in the gym for five years. A lot of people, right, I like to think that I have pretty good genetics because I made like this, this much progress in like a year, well, a year and a half now. Of course, there was that time where I wasn't. I'll say a year because I had like the six months where I just wasn't tracking my food properly. But comparison is just going to demotivate you. Like looking on Instagram at really muscly guys, guys who say claim that they've been to the gym for six months and now they look like flipping an Arnold. Like, A, most of the time those people are lying. And even if they aren't, like, they're not on the same journey as you are. You know, they're probably doing different things. Of course, you've got to be accountable. If you're not training hard enough, then that's why you're not doing as well as others. If you're not eating well enough, if you're not sleeping well enough, if you're not training hard enough, then that's when you need to hold accountability, put your hands up and say, yes, I need to be doing more. But if you're doing everything you can, if you're pushing to your ultimate best and you're still like upset because other people are doing, like having seemingly more games than you, I don't know what to tell you, man. Just just don't focus on other people right they're on their separate journey like their genetic makeup if you light it on the table will look nothing like yours so why bother complaining right why bother going on about oh i'm not tall enough so i don't need to build enough muscle because it's not going to get me intention from girls or oh he's making way more gains than i am and i've been training the same time as him you're not the same people focus on yourself focus on what you need to do and don't let anyone else ruin your success. So that was it. How to bulk as a skinny guy. Um, if anyone has any other tips in the comments, any other resources that they think would be worthwhile using and helping our brothers out there, then please include them in the comment section below. Especially if you think that I've like missed anything, an essential bit of advice. I know I'm not like the best speaker, so I'm sorry I've been stuttering at parts and you know, like not knowing how to come out with my words. But you know, these are just all the tips that I thought would be essential. I'll probably, when I finish this video, I'll probably think about like 20 more I could have mentioned, but hey, well, just if you think I've not included something, put it in the comments. I wish you the best of success, brother. May your gym, uh, gym, see what I mean? May your gym journey be fruitful and prosperous. Yes, got the word right then. I hope you reach your goals i hope that you stay consistent and it's great to see that you're wanting to improve yourself and break the mode the mold i swear i cannot speak english honestly i'll do that again i wish you the best of success i wish that your journey is fruitful and prosperous and i hope that you break the mold i hope that you have accepted that you want to make a change and i'm so proud of you that you are on this self-improvement journey god bless bro finally did it Mwah.